Good morning, everyone. This is gonna be a little bit different of a video. I'm actually taking my family down to Medang on holiday. It's holiday weekend today, Friday. So we've got a four day weekend. So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up walking around this morning and then get out on a 25 minute flight down to Medang. Let's go. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna do is the interior check. I'm just gonna walk you through real quick on what I do every morning. First thing I do, flip on the mask for avionics bus. Let this all warm up real quick and go ahead and start up here in the corner, making sure this is zero, cage this, set up my altimeter setting just to the known altitude that I know it is. Once everything is starting up, I'm gonna go ahead and flip all my lights on and do a quick walk around and also run my engine inlet to bypass normal and check to make sure all that's going right. After that, I'm gonna check my pitot heat. I click this on and this lower number should actually change. Turn it back off, do my right one and the upper number should change. We're gonna go ahead and put 20 degrees of flaps in for takeoff and then go ahead and work our trims on everything. Make sure our elevator trim is working, our aileron trim is working, and obviously our rudder trim. And we'll go ahead and set this all the way up for takeoff. Next, I run this elevator trim all the way down to its max and then all the way back up just to make sure that it does not have any binding or anything like that. Next, I'm coming over here, making sure all these are back flaps where I want to. I check my circuit breakers. Coming right back up here, I'm gonna check my oxygen level, make sure my HF is on, and then start running through my autopilot checks. All right, so after the interior check, I'm just gonna do a quick walk around, making sure that there's no damage or anything like that. I'm not doing a 100 hour inspection here. <laughs> this is just to make sure that everything is the way it's supposed to be for takeoff, checking oil, make sure we don't have any leaks, anything out of the ordinary that I can notice on a walk around. going finally all right igniters on fuel pump on low start my fuel on some over 14 percent ng will introduce my fuel watch my good morning All right, get our generator on, prop forward, our V2 track, our alternator. All right, we are 6,300 pounds nearly, so 59 and 69. So we'll rotate at 59 and 69 for coming back into land if we had to right away. We're down there at 9,000. Broke Tower, November, Tango, Kilo, good morning. Quest Taxi, to Medang, 5 POB. Copy inbound and outbound traffic. One, or one, two, one. Good morning. Uh, taxi, hold short to one seven left. Uh, I will be lining up, departing to the west. Taxi, hold short one seven left. No, I'm ten kilo. All right, let's get a taxi and landing head on. Let me tell you guys, traveling with family is the best. Love it. At one. Matango Kilo, behind the airborne, back 750, taxi 4017 left, and the backtrack line up. QNH 1021. 1021, clear the backtrack line up, 17 left. Now over my Kilo. We'll have 50 knots by our taxiway right there, or else we'll board on the runway after takeoff. We'll pitch for 85 knots. Consider our EPL, emergency power lever, which is basically in case FCU or a fuel control unit uh, craps out on us then that's basically a fuel override. Then we will sit feather, uh, pull off, shut off, emergencies masters, crack my door, 85 then 80 full flaps. Uh, 
Number 3 Kilo Kilo, uh, traffic inbound, half an hour uniform, focus 70 for Mosby uh, via Homburg, fellow 280 will be descend, and got to estimate 4 9 and uh, one seven left, make left turn, clear for takeoff. One seven left, left turn, clear for takeoff, copy inbound traffic, no November 10 Kilo, have a good weekend. Morning, we're at. Yeah, morning, red. All right, ignition condition flaps 20, fuel and harnesses 1330. Rotate 59. All right, torque is set, air speed's alive. We're going to go ahead and continue. ATT's right at 720, and there's rotate. Bump up our ITT up to 740 a little bit. And we'll pitch for seven and a half degrees originally, but that's gonna give us around 85 knots for our climb out. And we'll just keep adjusting our ITT so it's just as close as we can get to 740. All right, well, once we're over 300 feet, we'll start taking our flaps out. Once we're over 90 knots, then we'll go zero degrees. And bring our prop on back to 2000 RPM. All right, there's 500 feet. We'll go ahead and start making our turnout towards the Bennett Gap. That's our first, uh, not really reporting point, but that's where we're gonna switch over our radios out of this airspace onto Moresby. Now that we got our prop to 2000, we're gonna bring our ITT to 720 for our climb, kind of looking out where we wanna go first and seeing the best route to get out of this valley. I think I'm just gonna hold off underneath of these clouds first. And then um, I'm thinking that the valley, at the, the Bennett Gap is just gonna open up once we get up there a little bit further on up. So I'm just gonna remain underneath of these for the time being and make my call. Broke tower, November 10 kilo, departed two, correction, time three five. We'll be tracking zero one nine around climb nine or thousand. Estimated be dang on the hour. I'm going to thank you, Kilo. Copy it all. Contact Mosby on 120.1 HF, 65908 or 6538 at 15 miles. 120.1, 65908, 3815 miles. Okay. Okay. Have a nice weekend. You too. All right. And I'm hoping that the clouds will kind of slowly rise up to get out of this valley right here. If not, then I'm going to come back here and climb up over these clouds. But I just don't think that I have enough climb performance to get out of here as quickly as possible. Um, and so I'm hoping that there's going to be some gaps out here. Go ahead and turn our TAWS train awareness system off for the time being. And go ahead and clean up landing light. I passed to normal, igniters turned off. And just verifying all of our T's and P's are still in the green. Temperatures and pressures. I don't know if I introduced you to my son. This is my youngest son, Chaucer. He's 11 years old. He likes flying a lot. The rest of the fam, not so much. Also, I thought just as something unique what we can do is we can actually shoot the approach down in Medang. It's gonna be a nice day down there, but we can shoot it just for practice. Once I get around this corner right here, I'm gonna know real quick if I need to jump back out into the valley climb up over this layer, if it is a layer, or if I can squeeze underneath of it. I'm at 6,600. I really need to have really kind of 7,000 to get through this gap comfortably. And I'm not necessarily seeing a clear-cut viable option. So I'm going to go ahead and climb on up right through this hole and get on the top. I'm gonna go ahead and bring our ITT up, back on up to 7 fit, or 720, I should say. And we're pitching for around 12 degrees initially just to bring our son down to 99 knots for our best rate of climb. All right, now that I'm up here, looks like we'll just continue on our 100 knot climb with an ITT of 720. So we're at 730 right now, we'll be bringing it back. And it looks like there's a nice hole that we can through the Bennett Gap just nicely. 
you guys are a pilot, you'd like to pick up one of these checklists. You saw me just as I was getting ready to take off. This is a takeoff and landing checklist. I've got them from turbines to Cessna 152s to just like a piston, like a complex plane, maybe with retractable gear as well. So a couple different options that I have for these. Great for replacing your paper checklist. It covers all of your required and critical items for takeoff and landing so that you're not missing something critical like your landing gear or something and it's not just going off of like a gums check where you're just going off memory or something. This is a really quick visual cue to know, oh man, I haven't flipped this one here, I need to do that one. Or sometimes if you're getting busy in the pattern, you kind of forget if they've given you landing clearance or something. This is an awesome tool though. Check out the link down below. I've got them on my website. All right, so let's go ahead and um, throw my autopilot on here. I'm at 9,000, that's what I'm going up to, so looks like that should just get us through nicely. Go ahead and level off here. Hit our heading mode and altitude select on our autopilot. As we get around this cloud, I think it should open up nicely. Then we'll get the approach set in for my day. Before that, I actually have a white monster. I'm going to enjoy it. Orders B, 120.1, November Tango Kilo transfer. November Tango Kilo, one speaker to an Inger Hut. Good morning, November Tango Kilo through the Bennett Gap, 900,000, estimating Medang, 0 2. November Tango Kilo, no reported traffic, Air Ken H1009, 25 miles Medang, contact Medang to 18011. 1009 or contact my dang 25 miles, no number take a kilo. All right, well, let's go ahead and hit procedures down here. And go ahead and select the approach. We're going to want 07 LNAV plus V. And we are going to pick out, we're going to come in via Whiskey Delta. So let's go on down to Whiskey Delta. Minimums at we don't have everything we're going to go down to 740 today and let's just go ahead and activate that now and nav nav but first of all we're just going to go around this one last cloud right here to make it a little bit smoother for my family until we get set in all right so we want to have Basically 5,600 feet by Whiskey Delta. What I'm going to do, they've already put it in there for us. I'm just going to hit enter on each one of them. You can see it's changing it oops, to Cyan. And I can basically go all the way down to the final approach fix. And that's basically going to give me um, vertical guidance. It's not going to link in with the autopilot and fly it down, but it's just going to make all my little magenta boxes go down like that. So I'm coming back here. We want the 5600. We'll come down here and we'll turn it to, let's say, 700 feet per minute. It's because we're a little high up, it's completely fine. All right, we're just right at the very top of these clouds. Isn't this cool? I love it like this. All right, now let's go ahead and get back on course. Might as well just hit direct to. And then nav, nav. Okay, so now that I've got a quick second here, let's get our ATIS 127, decimal 8. 09 Zulu, runway 25, wind variable 3 knots, visibility 10 kilometers or more, smoke and haze, cloud view 1,500 feet, scattered 5,000 feet, QNH. 1012. Temperature and dew point note available. Caution, bird strike hazard exists. Acknowledge information, bravo. All right, let's turn them off. Sorry, I didn't realize you weren't on the same frequency as me. All right, so this little dotted line right here is 25 miles. That's when we have to start talking to the tower down to Medang. That's also the same time we're gonna start our descent down to start getting into the approach. You also have to turn around there. Yeah, I'm going to go to each one of these little dots and then come on straight in on the runway that way. It's actually been a really long time since I've flown because I've been training Brad and Jeff kind of off and on back and forth. So I have really not been flying much. 
It gives me a little bit of understanding and give them a little bit of grace for missing a couple of things. The other day, Brad had forgot to turn on his his air down here, which is not the end of the world. We were up to 16,000. It was just him and I, so we didn't really need any environmental air blowing on us because it was already cold. But I just forgot. Now my family is oh the back there melting because I forgot to turn it on for them. So I can understand. <laughs> Even I get overwhelmed on like getting everything done and it's just normal when flying when you're not flying and you're not doing everything exactly the same all the time it's easy to forget things so i'm going to go over my approach even though it's going to be a vfr day getting into medang i'm going to go over it just to refresh my brain on what i'm going to be doing next so just verifying this is medang 07 gnss RNAV, we're coming in, Whiskey Delta 5600, descending to 3690, and then continuing to send on down the approach. So our actual um, straight in LNAV, we've got the actual Q&H on this one, so we're going to do 640 on it. So I can actually change my barrow down here, down to 640. these clouds here. Let me go ahead and set up 118.1 so everything's ready to go when I need to talk to Medang Tower. And aren't these clouds just absolutely perfectly beautiful? So awesome looking. No, doesn't it feel weird going through a cloud? It's dark sometimes. It's now it's raining on the windshield a little bit. Oh, now we're lo it looks like we're going hyperspeed. I know, right? Doesn't it? And then when we come out, it'll probably give us a kick on the way out. Uh, hopefully, everybody's not getting sick back there. Well, let me go ahead and slow on down. That'll make the bumps a little bit less for everybody. Oh. See what oh. I mean? When you come out of the cloud, it like kicks you out almost. Weird sensation, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Vertical track. All right. Let's head on down. Let's go on down to 5600. It's already actually put it in right there for us. We need 700 feet per minute. And if we head over to this page right here, we need 718 feet to be exact. Okay, with another cloud, so I'm just going to slow it on down a little bit. That will just make our transition through the clouds. This is a small airplane, so you guys forget that. And it does get thrown around pretty easy in these little clouds. Uh, just for everybody's sake, let's make this as comfortable as possible. So comfortable. What's that? So comfortable. Whoa, it's like a roller coaster. Oh. Iron's probably puking back there by now. Uh, no, he's eating. Well, that's not good. Help no, no, he's not that. eating. No, he's not eating. He's just got... All right, there we go. Now we're out. Let's go ahead and call up Tower here in just one second. Tower. My dang Tower, November Tango Kilo. And go ahead and speed on back up. Hey, we're having problems with the radio just the other day, so... November Tango Kilo, Madame Tower. Morning, November Tango Kilo, 25 miles to the south, passing 7,800 on descent. Your circuit is 02, requesting to shoot practice 07 GNSS via Whiskey Delta. November Tango Kilo, I confirm you wish to uh, carry out the uh, IRNAV approach with 07? A from Nev, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, what do you create for the IRNAV approach on May 07? Report established in November Foxtrot. Good for the RNAV 07, report established Whiskey Foxtrot, November Tango Kilo. November Tango Kilo, correction, that's uh, Whiskey Foxtrot. Whiskey Foxtrot, November Kilo. Let's go ahead and start up our landing checklist, our selectors, our TAWS is off, our VREF which is our approach speed. We're going to be landing with 6,100 pounds, so 68 knots is going to be our approach speed, or V-REF all the way down. Yes, we do actually just fly V-REF all the way down. Not like, I know what V-REF is, but yes, that's what we use all the way down. And it changes with the weight of the aircraft. 
Why is it called Foxtrot? Because if you say F, it kind of sounds like S on the radio. So if you say Foxtrot, then you know it's F. That's why. Oh. All right, 30 seconds before we join in at Whiskey Delta. I'll go ahead and slow it down a little bit, otherwise the turn, sometimes it just overshoots the turn quite a bit. 10 seconds to go. Once this next thing, uh, once the next leg actually transitions, now we can turn it down to 3690 and it will automatically turn it down to the next leg. If you do it before you get there, it can't go to 3690, it only goes to 3700. And we'll go ahead and increase that, slow this on down. At one minute to go, I'm going to go ahead and configure the airplane with 10 degrees of flaps, prop forward at about 400 to 450 foot-pound of torque, and that's going to give us our 110 knots, and that's what we fly the Kodiak on approaches. After this, we want 2,100 feet on a heading of 058. And our mist, if we had to go eight, miss is 058. I'm going to go ahead and set my bug up for that right now. 058, and we'll be climbing straight ahead to 2,100 feet. I'm not sure if you guys can see it. I have this. I do not have my altitude select on this approach. Otherwise, it just always continually tries to even itself out, which just throws your whole approach off. Okay, let's go ahead and push our prop forward. Bring our torque to 450, 10 degrees of flaps. I get ready to start turning. Once it flips, I'm going to go down to 2,100 feet on my altitude. I bring my torque on back just because we are a little bit light today. Bring it up back to 350 to start getting my speed down to 110. Then I'll readjust my power. Right, next section down to 2100. We need to tell her when we get to Whiskey Foxtrot, which is coming up here in a second. Coming in down to 110 now. Let's help the autopilot go ahead and level itself off. Otherwise, it just wants to go back and forth, back and forth until it gets finally settled in. There's 110. Let's bring our torque ever so slightly up until we can notice, oh, there's our speed. It goes up one knot. Then you just bring it right back down. Rather than making massive adjustments, make it as easy as possible for you by making really small adjustments on approaches. It really will help you. Go ahead and adjust our vertical speed. After this, we're going down to 1,100 feet. And then after that, we go down to our 640. Get my power up a little bit more just so I can get my speed in. Just not quite getting my 110 knots that I'm looking for. All right, now we're actually getting visual with the field. 49 more seconds before we have to make our call. Finish this up, we'll do bypass, landing light on. If we have to go around, power up 20 degrees, pitch for 73 or 12 degrees, and maneuver is required. Prop and harness is done. 18 seconds to go. Medic Tower, November Tango Kilo, Whiskey Foxtrot this time. November Tango Kilo, which I continue approach. November Tango Kilo. Whiskey 3, vacate the runway. November Tango Kilo, runway 07, clear to land. Clear to land 07, no, but I mean Kilo. How's that? It's so much hotter. Oh, I know. When we go past like 5,000 feet, you can really feel the humidity just faking us now. Uh, can you turn mine up a little bit more? That's as high as it goes, bud. What? There's 200 feet to go to 1,100 feet, just letting me know. Next one's all the way down to our minimum, our minimum safe altitude of 640. 17 seconds to go. Let's just go ahead and turn that all the way down to 640. At this point, this is a real approach. I bring it all the way up to 1,000 feet per minute so I can get down as quickly as possible, break out if there is any type of weather. I also have to decrease my power a little bit because I'm increasing my descent rate. That way I can break out as quickly as possible and get in here marginal VFR if it was an actual bad day. November Tango, Kilo, two mile final, 07. November Tango, Kilo, minimums, minimums. Zero seven, clear to land and caution, bird hazard. Clear to land, 07, thanks, thank you. Kilo. All right, let's go 20 degrees of flaps. There is our minimums. 
We've got four flaps to go. There's our prop and harness is done. A one knot of tailwind. We have been cleared to land. And we'll go full flaps. Checklist is complete. 500. Our landing speed 68 at the slowest. So we'll go ahead and start slowing on down now. We'll go for around the 500 foot marker. A little flat right now. Lots of right rudder for approach. Point 68 knots. I'm just slowly bringing my speed out. And we'll just let it roll out. That's the tower. Feels so sticky. I know. It is sticky down here. 32 degrees out right now, which is, I don't know, 90 something maybe, high 80s. Guys, I hope you guys enjoyed that flight down with my family. We're gonna be here down just for the weekend and then flying back, probably shooting a video on the way back as well because, well, I never get to fly anymore, so. Well, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out some of my other videos. Let's get three into the movement area. I've got quite a few videos on my channel with, um, yeah, a lot more even exciting flights than this one. So. Thank you so much for taking the time, guys, and welcome to the day. Alright, see you guys next time.